Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we are going to use the concepts we learned on the previous episode to fix a security issue we have currently on our application. So let me show you guys what I mean by that. Uh, go ahead and log in as one of your users and visit an account other than your own. Okay, so I'm logged in as Coding Flick, this account. I'm going to go ahead and select another user, for example, this test account. And as you guys can see, we are not showing the edit profile button. However, let's say you're a clever person and you go ahead and you just, you know, randomly try adding the edit route at the end. Okay, so this route over here. So you add it yourself manually, which the users can do, the client. And you hit enter. You can see that you're actually able to see the profile page. And even worse, we have the ability to go ahead and change it, maybe change the photo, put something, you know, uh, the actual user doesn't want and we are able to save it as you guys can see now we are redirected to the profile page but if we go back and look at the account again as you can see it got updated so obviously this is a security flaw so let's go ahead and use policies to fix it real quick so like we did on the previous episode i'm going to open up the terminal and we need to first create a policy for our user model so let's go ahead and do that i'll type in php artisan php artisan make policy so i'm going to name it user policy as we talked about the format is model name singular followed by policy and then i'm also going to go ahead and pass in the model argument and pass it user so let's hit enter let's go ahead and take a look at this user policy over here now by default obviously it comes with a lot of methods i'm going to remove all the ones we don't need so for now we don't need view any uh, we don't need this one we don't need create as well. I think we only need update, okay? We also don't have delete functionality for our users. So I'm gonna go ahead and only keep update, okay? Now VS Code is giving me some errors. That's because I'm not returning anything. So for now, I'll just return false. And we'll come back to this one in a second. And if you take a look at our user controller, I have it opened over here. As you guys can see, we have three methods. We have the show method. Now the show method is accessible by anyone, so even kind of guest users or users that are not logged in can also view it so we don't really need a policy for this one or permission so we only need to worry about edit and update page okay so let's go ahead and write that functionality so basically uh, the check we need to do is we need to make sure the logged in user which is this user argument the id of the logged in user matches the id of our model okay or the model we want to update so in this case, we can say user.id equal equal uh, model.id. So that's the check we need to do now. Uh, in Laravel models or all of our models or eloquent models have a helper function that does the exact same thing, which is a little bit more descriptive. So instead of this, you can go ahead and do user is model. So this is another alternative way of writing it. And I will show you guys the description for it basically determine if two models have the same ID and belong to the same table. So if you guys prefer, you can go ahead and use this syntax. I think it's a bit nicer. It's also shorter. So I'm going to be using it from now on. Now on our policy model, we were using the exact sorry, idea policy. We were using the exact same check. So I'll update our idea policy as well. So instead of user ID, I'll say user is idea user. Okay. So Let's also update this one. And again, it's a bit shorter, so I think it looks nicer. So let's go ahead and update this as well. But if you guys would like, you can still go ahead and use the previous method. It's totally fine. Okay, so now that we have created our user policy, we can go ahead and use it inside our user controller. So let's go ahead and do that. We can say this, authorize, update, and then we need to pass in the user we want to update, right? So in this case, I'll pass this over here. That's all we have to do. And I can copy this and I can paste it over here. Now, we don't need separate permissions for edit and update because they are basically doing the same thing, right? So this is the edit view page. And then this one is the post that actually performs the update. So we are going to use the exact same policy for both of them. So let's save this, guys. Let's go back and let's see if it actually fixed the issue. So right now, I'll try to access the edit page again. I'll manually add it. And as you can see, now it's telling me uh, this action is unauthorized. So if someone tries to be sneaky and kind of edit someone else's profile, now they won't be able to do it. Now, 
The way we went about implementing this is we first implemented the entire thing and later on we came and added the policies and authorization. Generally, you want to do the authorization first so you don't forget about it. So from now on, if we implement any functionality, I'll just create a policy right away and do the authorization actually first so we don't forget about it. So that's quite important. Of course, if you have unit test or integration test, you probably are testing it over there as well as, you know, an extra safety net, but just something to be be careful about. You'd never want to go ahead and have one of your uh, controller methods unauthorized. So, you know, any user can access it. That's very dangerous. So that's it, guys. Now, one more thing we also need to do is we need to update our blade file. So if you guys notice, for example, when we go to our own profile, we have this edit button. I would like to also go ahead and use what we learned on the previous episode. So I think for this one, we are using a blade file called the user card. So I'll search for it. A user card is inside resources. We use users shared user card. And it's actually all the way at the top. And actually here we have Mario. So let's also change this with the actual username. We forgot to do that. So what we did, we already have is we are checking the ID of the logged in user with the ID of the profile we are checking. So we can go ahead and replace this with our new update policy. Okay, this one. So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, we can say can update. And then here we can pass in the user. So that's all we have to do. And then instead of end if, we can say end can. That's all we have to do, guys. So let's save this. Let's go back. I'll do reload. And as you can see, it still works. Very nice. Okay, then. All right, now one more thing we can also do, guys, is we can go ahead and get rid of these auth checks over here. Now, when we were using the previous method, we needed the auth because uh, the way we were doing it is this would give us a null. Now, we could have maybe checked, done some other technique, but we can actually get, go ahead and get rid of this auth over here because the can also checks if the user is logged in. So if it's not logged in, it'll just return false. Basically, it won't allow us to access it. So let's go ahead and do that. And if I reload, you guys can see... Uh, it still works and if i log out and i try to view a profile uh, it still works okay so we can go ahead from now on get rid of these auth directives so let me log in again and i'll open up my own profile we are doing the exact same check down here as well and i think it's the opposite we are saying cannot right so this is for our follow and unfollow button uh although i guess we can Keep this now one thing we can do is we can go ahead and either use this syntax or we can go ahead and say this dot user is and then go ahead and pass this over here this is something we can also do so it's up to you guys uh, which way you go ahead and do it so i'm going to go ahead and use uh, this syntax i think it's a little bit more it's easier to read. You immediately know what the code does. So let's go back. Let's do a quick reload. Let's see if everything works. It does. Although we need to go ahead and say, add that. So if it's not the current user. So let's do a reload. As you can see, the follow and unfollow button are not visible. Let's try this account. We are able to see the follow button. Very nice. Now, there is one more way we could go ahead and write this. And instead of this is, we could also go ahead and do uh, is not. So then we can remove this. So this is a little bit easier to read. So let's go ahead and use is not instead. So let's do a reload. And it seems to still be working. I'll check out the profile page. And yeah, this one is also working. So let's just double check, make sure we are not... Uh, checking the user anywhere else it seems to be the only place we are doing it so that's it guys for our user authorization i think that's all we have to do now there is one more thing i do like to cover before we end the episode guys and that's regarding our password hashing now right now we are using this uh, in laravel 10 there is a new feature that automatically hashes user passwords for you and in order to check that just open up your user model and scroll all the way down under casts, there is a section called password. So basically, inside this cast, you can let Laravel know it will automatically cast your database values to some sort of object. For example, email verified at, it will automatically create a carbon date object out of it. And there is, since Laravel 10, a new one called hashed. 
And basically what it does is automatically creates or hashes your passwords for you from plain text to a hashed one, right? Now, why am I mentioning this? Well, on, inside our auth controller, when we are creating a new user, we're actually hashing the passwords ourselves, right? So as you guys can see, under our auth controller store, we are actually manually hashing the passwords. Now, technically, we could go ahead and remove this. Or alternatively, we can disable this cast hashed. Now, I prefer to have control over the hashing process myself. So it's kind of up to you guys how you want to do it. Now, you can still keep this hashed. Uh, it's actually smart enough. It doesn't double hash it as far as I'm ever. I think it's mentioned in the documentation. So if it's already hashed, it won't hash it again for you. But uh, if you don't want it, you can go ahead and disable it. And I think for me, I'm going to go ahead and disable the functionality. But if you guys would like to have it enabled, you can definitely go ahead and get rid of the hashing over here. It will still go ahead and automatically hash it for you. Just something I wanted to mention. I don't think I covered it on the registration episode. So it's still something it's good to know about. And it's a new feature added since Laravel 10. So if you're watching some older tutorials on YouTube, uh, it may not be mentioned there. So for me, I'm just going to comment it. If you want to enable it later on, we can definitely go ahead and uncomment it. So that's it, guys, for today's episode. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. As always, make sure you like the video and subscribe. And I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.